Okay, we'll start in a couple minutes here, folks. I can hear you're already chatting amongst yourselves. Hey, Mark. I can't hear you, man. You're muted. How's that? Yeah, that's good, man. I'm here. It's, We're it's a talk loud. Yeah. It's a huge party, Nigel. Massive. We had, no one's wearing masks and we're all just licking door handles and That's not good. <laughs> all right, you can... door handles, not good. <laughs> all right you can mute yourself I'll, I'll mute you again here mark okay. all right let's do this thing shimshon okay. i guess i'm uh, sitting in the corner here okay. hey, shimshon, you want to mute mark You have been banished to the place of muting, Mark. He believed in the green light, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but for no matter, tomorrow we will run faster, stretch our arms out faster and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. All right, people out there, what, what, what book is that from? Who's the author? Come on, Eng Eng English majors, poets. Yeah, yeah, Kurt. You're muted, Kurt. Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby, nailed it. F. So, Scott Fitzgerald. So typically I've been opening the show with a line from, uh, from something that uh, we saw from a book that we uh, people we know or um, things that are in the public domain uh, because we are now recording everything, putting things online. We can't just say whatever we want and do whatever we want up here like IWC used to be able to. But as of 10 days ago, everything from 1925 is in the public domain. So we can we can do whatever we want with your shit, F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> I was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was saying to Aaron, we should do just really like disrespectful, like raunchy, great Gatsby skits or something like that. Uh, okay. What, what do we got? Oh, okay. Well, okay. What do we got here? How is it? How, how is everyone? How's, how's the holidays? Mark's clapping. Everyone else's, everyone else's name titles are stoic. They're stoic. Henry says, woo. Mackenzie says Nick Carraway was gay. Hot take. Uh, I, I would read that paper. 
<laughs> okay, as always, so that was F. Scott Fitzgerald. As always, this is the Inspired Word Cafe. No, Shimshon's not going to do it. I took too long. It's okay. Oh, they, oh, no, stop. It's okay. Please, please. Okay, so uh, again, as always, we, we are coming here. That's Cedar smashing his uh, little stroller against the ground. Uh, as always, we are coming from uh, unseated silk territory here. Uh, do you mind... I'm mean, getting that. <laughs> uh, it, uh, uh, it's, you know, as always, we want to acknowledge that we are uh, guests on this land, but, um, but, but it's worth acknowledging that we are uninvited guests on the, on Silk territory. Um, please feel free to uh, type where you're coming from into the chat, whose territory you're on. If you don't know uh, who's the, the people on which are, uh, who's, who uh, steward the land that you're on, please, uh, you know, do some research. There's lots of great resources. I'm sure um, that if you want to send me an email, there's this one, I can't remember what it's called, but you can just like type in where you are and it'll tell you um, the traditional territories that you're on. It's a really great resource. Uh, okay, so tonight we have, a, we have a pretty exciting, fun night planned. Um, typically, you know, we, we do the open mic thing. That's why you're here. You come out, people sign up, they read. But tonight we're bringing back some old school formats. Uh, we've got a little bit of an open mic. Uh, then we've got uh, so we got some musicians for you, which we'll 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 get to later. I'll, I'll tell you more about. And then we're gonna close the show with a reading by uh, local author Kurt Slauson. Yeah. Uh, okay, so w without further ado, I'm going to get to our first reader here, a, a mainstay at the IWC Open Mic, one of IWC's uh, longest running members. Uh, he's sort of the metronome that, that keeps time at every show. He's telling me with his finger to buy some time. Mark, 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 yes. Mark. Yes. All right, warm IWC welcome for Mark Bertolutti, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, I read a lyric of poetry. This one's called The Seed. It's four in the morning and without a sound or warning, awoken from the deep of sleep, I realize not what is sown is reaped, but what is reaped is sown. And somewhere in the heavenly skies lies a silhouette of an angel who cries, weeping to her heart's discontent. And it can't just look back and say that's for the, for the truth, or it's not what you meant. Lust and greed have abandoned me. Now love is a seed I feed. A gift from above, the essence of love, what dreams are made of. If you ever feel all has been lost, I'll be there no matter what's the cost. No matter if you are in need or you feel your heart is about to bleed, I'll give you my love, I'll plant a seed. So as another day goes by, you know, time's ticking. It's a sign of the times, you just gotta go with the rhythm. Thanks. This next one's called The Chaos of It All. I've been wandering and wondering what to do, driving down the same old street, turning up the stereo louder and louder every time I think of you. The road is endless, what do I do? I keep thinking this is senseless, I need to find my way to you. I'm lost in the music and the lyrics playing in my soul. I'm lost in the chaos of it all. I've been searching for something and I don't know where to find it, but I'll, but I'll be there if you don't mind it. Thanks. It, natural disaster. Man is not immortal, it comes as no surprise. His judgment is crucial in his own demise. Wars within countries, we are sure to fall. Aftermath, no one sees, split the buildings and crumbled walls. Polluted skies, heavens above, acid rangers melt to rust. This land we once loved, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's too late for sympathy, damage has been done. Our repair is a society, God bless each and every one. In this world in which we live, you can throw our principles out the door. Mankind forgets, make love, not war. Okay, next, poem. next poem is called Under the Lights. Lazy days and crazy nights, man, have I been living life. I've spent my time waiting in line, waiting in line for my time to shine. Now I found my way up on stage and under the lights, and I got to say, it feels all right. Music will save your soul. Just feel the rhythm of the beat and let it take control from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Let your body rock and your mind roll into your own destiny. On another night, and on another stage, and in another place, the lights will again shine upon my face. So, my friend, I'll, I'll, 
some of my friends, I'll reminisce forever, the good old times when we, when we would all shine together. I found my way up on stage and under the lights, and I say thanks. The guy feels all right. The next one's called The Abyss of Loveliness. I'm standing somewhere in between, a nightmare and a dream. If you listen closely, you'll know what I mean. I thought I'd been around, seen many big cities and small towns. So now I've found a profound place within you where I can feel proud. I'm not just a face in the crowd. With a kiss goodbye to loneliness and into the abyss of loveliness, I like to sing it aloud. What do you say when there's nothing left to say? What do you do when there's nothing else to do? What do you do when you got the blues? Well, all I do is think of you and a dream is coming true. Thank you. Next one is going to In the end, my friend, and this will be my last poem. Now, I'm not proud of many things I've said and done, though I want you to know I'm not out to prove myself to anyone. I just take my life as it comes, and in the end, my friend, what's done is done. We can't bring back yesterday. It doesn't matter what we do or say. Because so if we could all just live for today, everything would work out in the end, my friend, anyway. Memories we share are beyond compare. What I'm really trying to say to you is you've been a fine, fine friend. So remember, wherever you go, I've got your back any day, any time, anywhere, in the end. Thanks. If I got one more there. Uh, I'm going to cut you off, Mark. Okay. That's it, buddy. I love you. What a, what a perfect way to, to start the year, Mark. Mark Berduti. Let's have a, Let's have another round of applause for Mark. You better be clapping for real at home. Yeah, right on, Henry. Sure thing, bud. Okay, up up next to the mic, uh, we have we have another IWC folk. Um, this person has, uh, I, you know, whenever we we do the thank yous at the end of all of the shows and. In, in the the line or the the fine print of the events on Facebook, we're always sort of thanking the collective and the blah, 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 and, and thanking these groups of people. But I really just want to like doubly thank this person that's going to read. They have been the you know one of the the perfectionist uh, pieces of of uh, Darkwing Ducks gum chew gum holding this this organization together through the through COVID and, and, and making this organization look and sound great and all of the video and audio that we've been producing. So um, thank you so much. Let's have a, a huge, huge welcome for uh, IWC's own uh, Shimshan. Oh. Sorry, I'm also running tech uh, for myself here. <laughs> so uh, thank, thank you so much, um, Cole, for, for that introduction. I'm just like blushing. Um, seriously, that was, that was so kind. Uh, and it's, it's such uh, a pleasure. Um, so I have a, a poem here um, that I wrote um, about the experience I have of being autistic, which uh, was because I, I get a lot of, I think you hear, when you do hear poems about what it's like to be uh, autistic or neurodiverse, you often find there's like a lot of these just really kind of angry poems and like sometimes totally rightly so angry poems. Um, but I just wanted to have something that was more kind of uh, celebrating, uh, celebratory of the really fun and good parts of being autistic uh, without denying some of the stuff and the reasons why uh, you can definitely feel justified in being uh, angry at, uh, at a world that feels so incompatible. Um, so this is, is about that and, uh, and also about, uh, you know, my, uh, as an autistic person, you're a diverse person and my relationship to uh, language, which uh, I have a love of, even though it's sometimes been a challenge. Uh, so this is called Enjoy Slowly. Every new word runs through my entire brain before I know what every new word is. Joy in deep chocolate, say vor e, melts and ebony dash, sweet, delicate. New meaning means new sen 
sations, as senses compete to process and crack, click, to confirm that this is the good stuff. Mm. New vocabulary is such a personal pleasure. Joy in solitude. A one of a kind mind, I'm told it would be so exciting to spend a day in my exotic head. In a novel, an author's audacious choice, illustrative, unknown, syllable counting. It's a gift, a treat to slowly slosh around neurodiverse gray matter. Delight in new synapses, firing, bridging, creating, joy in acceptance. A new flavor to hold tight, roll around, untangle slowly, but etymology is ecstasy, to be tucked away. A waterlog file system with every special, with every interest in the infinitely inventoried experiences coming up at the wrong place, at the wrong time, at the mention of something laterally, laterally, laterally related. Until it finds not the eyes, but the ears. This time, a lecture at the library. I know that taste, this red ol and has been intimate with me. A delight I'd forgotten until I caught its scent again. So lacious in sensations, it wells up wanting to bring back the youth of melting, savoring, discovery. How well the pieces fit three days late, but I get it. The pattern just needed processing at my own pace. It's dark chocolate, so precious. It waits under folds of pressed paper like gold for autumn. Until one day a bite slips into light confabulation. One day a piece finds its way into the lunchbox, joy in the unexpected poking out between notes without realizing an ip, if, an e, it's been added to the well-worn script, staring off into space, again thinking I'm told I must be so, 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 I'm told being autistic must be, but don't finish because finally the sweet gift is comfortably unwrapped, melting unconsciously, between fiddling fingers from hand, inky black viscous to the page, alas, old friend, joy in companionship. Thanks. Cue up that applause for yourself, Shimshon. <laughs> I feel very guilty about uh, leaving up the applause for myself. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shimshon. That was really lovely. Have, oh, have you ever read? Uh, have you ever read Jordan Scott's work? Uh, maybe, but I'm so bad with names. Jordan Scott has like a really bad stutter, and he like his poetry sort of like plays off of his stutter and like makes him like say words that are hard to say. Um, and it it just it, it's not like totally you know not the same thing, but it just sort of reminded me of kind of thinking through like somebody's own sort of particular body and experience through poetry. You should, you should check it out. It, the, he's got a couple books that are really dope. Oh, sweet. Thanks so much. Yeah. yeah no, I, uh, that, that is really, yeah. Thanks. That's a very, very flattering comparison. Thank you. He's uh he's Canadian and he just put out this like children's book that has been on like every New York times bestseller list. And he's just like a Canadian poet and, now he's just now he's like this like internationally renowned like children's author out of all of a sudden from since he put this book out. Oh my goodness. Canadian poets making it on the <laughs> New York Times bestseller list. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shim Sean. <laughs> Moving on, Cole. That's what that clapping says. 
Um, Glen Glenna, are you out there at all? We've got a poet uh, signed up tonight, Glenna, and we don't, I don't see her out there, but potentially uh, Glenna is watching via someone else's Zoom. I'm talking slowly to buy Glenna time. If anyone is out there with Glenna, Glenna is up to the mic. If, if no one is out there with Glenna, we will move on. Glenna, Glenna, Glenna. That was Glenna by Cole Mash. That was, that was a poem. Okay, Glenna, we're gonna move on here. If if you are out there, uh, if you are out there and you or you show up at some point or somebody's got you muted or something, just just holler and we'll uh, we'll circle back around to you. Uh, okay, so so as we mentioned tonight, we've got a surprise musical guest. Um, uh, joining us tonight to promo their new song Precipice from their upcoming album Two Story Building, we have Gauche Coach. <laughs> Round of applause for Gauche Coach. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Woo! Um, so, my name's Travis Andrews. Uh, I am one half of Gauche Coach, uh, stage name Frantic. I am Working on this project with Nigel Patrick, who is a uh, stage name Kid Solomon. We actually met Nigel. through IWC. Hey guys. There he is. Uh, so we actually met at the um, the Battle Hollywood Slam back in 2020. Uh, we identified that we both had a real strong hip hop uh, influence in our work and we started collaborating online and uh, that kind of led us to the birth of this project. And uh, Real broad strokes, the idea behind the project is it's a five track uh, poetry inspired hip hop album with a big focus on like classical instrumentation inspired beats. So there's lots of violin, lots of cello, lots of piano. There's some synth, more traditional hip hop songs in there as well. And um, the trick to it is each song is going to represent a stage of the classical hero's journey. Um, if you're not familiar with that, is it's like just like this the archetype of like like the Her the Hercules movie is like a really obvious like choice of that just nails it. So what we're gonna hear today is uh, track two, which is called Precipice, and it represents the moment that the hero decides to take that first step. Um, toss it over to you there, Nigel. Yeah, totally. Um, great intro. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to jump on and say hi as well. Um, it's kind of fun. Very. Uh, it's like full circle because as Travis uh, mentioned, we met at an IWC event and uh, now uh, thank you so much, Cole, Shimshon, Emily, Aaron for uh, giving us a little space to kind of showcase. That's uh, super, super kind and, uh, and and a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, we, it was a lot of work. Um, we are amateur uh, amateur production the whole way through having to kind of um, limp along and like learn uh, all the production stuff. So. It was a lot of work, but yeah, we're pretty happy to have something to show for it. All right, awesome. There is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. Bring me but to the very brim of it. From that place I shall no leading need. It's a nervous excitement, couldn't fight it. Heart in my throat as I stood and confided in the nearby trees. And it seemed that my voice reached them, cutting through the gull screams. Response came then, and I questioning, Lil, you're really gonna share all this ink that you've spilt? The anger, the fear, the doubt, the guilt. Brandished this blade with his half-made hilt. With eyes sealed tight and hair wind swept, and a smile on my lips and a heart that leapt. This nurtured flame, so carefully kept, could never be less. Foot to the edge and I left. Both feet first, heart bit to burst. This is low keys turf, screaming, please choke turfs. Foot with disaster, new skills to master. Skirt round the pastures, crooks in the pasture. 
laughter in the pain, joy in the rain. And if I say that enough, that could be my refrain. There's no shame in chasing what you want to be. I always want to be an artist with a pen and a beat. Pardon me, what you're hearing here is a part of me. And honestly, the pressure I put on myself can make it hard to breathe. I might just leave, might just cease, might make peace. Might forget about the man that I seek to be. Might forget the plan, the hopes, the schemes. Can't regret or fail if you choke your dreams. Ha, nope. Did you buy it with failure? I am non-compliant. Rising, roaring, wings spread, soaring. Never boring, soul contorted. Lyrics hoarded, self-important. Thoughts so boring, once so sorted. Twice distorted, twice reported. Have something to say, well fuck, let's record it. Alive, but what lost light lurks in the beyond? The night is always darkest before the dawn. Black hole in the side of the hill, darker than the deeds that stalk you still. Sign above the door strikes you with sudden fear. Beware all ye who enter here. Find your way to the unknown island. Planets die and stars are shining. Point of no return, I'm blinded, pulled into event horizon. No time to stay whole while we reminisce. Enter the void, strike forth for the conduit. Steal fire from the gods like Prometheus. Teeter on the edge, I'm higher than a Pegasus. And to say the fall is deadly will be generous. No extra life, this ain't no Sega Genesis. Prepare to lose it all if you step to this. One step between the poet and the precipice. One step between the poet and the precipice. One step, one step, one step. One step between the poet and the precipice. Falling. 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 Approach the edge, there's no telling what's ahead. I guess I'll try to get some sleep when I'm dead. Approach the future, take a risk. Abandon all your understanding, find your bliss. Approach the precipice, I can't resist it. And though the pitch is vicious, I embrace the distance. Approach the edge and feel your tension tighten. Surrender fully to the fear that you are fighting. Eat the rich is now the slogan, all the things the wealthy are withholding. I'm emboldened to take a leap of faith and let the fire blaze. Accepting I am always slowly dying until the day I find my true alignment. Kill your masters and your darlings, spill your insides. Aching arms arriving at the summit, stepping off the edge, returning stomach. Wind caress my body gently as I plummet. It's a long way down and I am falling. Telling truth has now become a calling. All our knowledge worth the trade. Now watch the surface fade. The surface fades, eyes the glaze. Set like soul in a dusky haze. A winking eye, a blinking my Gaze burns bright, horizon sight. Feet that entreat, a toe tap spire. I'm the least of Eden and my soul sings choirs. Plead and treat to the great denier. Sack me up with driftwood for the pyre. Harp on bygones, more of a liar. A tired heart and a co-conspirer. Oh so dire, shoes to the edge. Oh there he goes, so elusive again. Elusive date this elusive place gather with a ghoulish loose mass displace rotten reticent retreat replace and bold and gaze broke through the haze Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Let's have a let's have another round of applause for Gosh Coach. Gosh Gosh Coach. Yahoo! Mark's giving out some snaps. I, I like that intro. It was like I, at first I thought it was like Dylan Thomas or something, but it that, that's a that's like Shakespeare, isn't it? That's right. That was a radio production of King Lear. Right, yeah. You can always you can always hear that iambic pentameter. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, that was uh, also public domain. Sick. Yeah, nice. <laughs> everyone, everyone repping the public domain tonight. Well, th thanks so much, you guys. Did you want to say anything else about that before we, we moved on? You want to like plug where where can we find that? 
Great question, and that is what I wanted to mention. Um, we're going to, we have one, one track already on Bandcamp, and this one, you guys got kind of a sneak preview tonight because it's not on Bandcamp yet. It's coming out tomorrow. Um, and so uh, I'd love to post the link to our Bandcamp somewhere, um, maybe on the IWC page or something. Cool. So I guess for everyone out there who wants to kind of check it out in its best audio, best quality audio, um, you can kind of watch for that post or just search it on Bandcamp. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. The, the production was really great on that. It's, Thank you. I thought it sounded awesome. Okay, so I think we have another thing we're going to play here. We're going to wrap the IWC podcast uh, before we get to our, our featured poet of the night, featured cartographer of the night. <laughs> Yeah, you're on you're on the ground floor. <laughs> Suspense is building. Doom doom. Doom doom. IWC podcast. By Britney Spears. Oh, here we go. Hi, glad you could make it. Got your coffee? Tea? Scone? All right then, let's get started. Welcome, Welcome to the Inspired, Inspired Word Cafe. Cafe. I'm Shimshon. And I'm M. And this is a podcast that brings all the excitement of the written and spoken words of the Inspired Word Cafe home to your headphones. Whether you've been to one of our reading events, poetry slams, or workshops before, or even if this is your first time hearing about the Inspired Word Cafe, we've got a little something to scratch your writerly, readerly, literary itches. That's right, every month we'll be bringing you a well-caffeinated dose of poetry, prose, and all the fresh-brewed goodness of the written word. Here we'll be shining our coffeehouse spotlight on local writers from in and around the Okanagan Valley. Plus, stay tuned for our special episodes of Inspired Word Cafe live events, which we'll be dropping while they're hot. Subscribe now to the Inspired Word Cafe podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the Google Podcasts app. Trust me, you won't want to miss this one. Thanks, Thanks for, for stopping, stopping by, by the, the cafe. cafe. We have a cafe now. That's that's our number one most asked question all the time is uh, if people email us or send us messages to the IWC Facebook and ask us where the cafe is. So one day, <laughs> yeah, that one queued up. Okay, up, up next on the docket, we got here, we've got a, a local poet coming at you, Kurt Slauson, you, got, you may have heard of this, this dude. Uh, he's local poet extraordinaire. He's going to rep his new book, Ghost Atlas, here tonight on IWC. Uh, Kurt was born a ruffian time-lapse cubit down the old yodely yo ping pong bin. Out in the succotash gardens, a collection of antimatter, Bula Bay's digits emerged underneath hand jog jabber aisle and eventually unwrapped flannelly smidgens, precipice filinus. Fiery jejun omission bender, effortlessly distracted by whiff of migrant cheeses, he him remains deployed variously at Leftstock, Minster, propagating compost manifestoed optimistically at www.kurtslawson.com. Let's have a warm IWC welcome for Kurt Slauson. <laughs> Hey, cool, man. Thanks for that, Cole. Uh, thanks to everybody for being here. It's, uh, it's really great to be here. I, uh, I decided to dress up tonight. I've had zero occasion to wear a tie in the last six months. Uh, so, hey, special occasion. Um, it, really great to be here and uh, just so so incredibly thankful for IWC and what they mean in our community. We're so lucky to have uh, a literary arts collective. Um, so many thanks uh, 
you know, right to uh, to Raul, the founder and visionary, uh, to Cole and Aaron, keep, you know, going strong. Um, you know, everybody on the board, the podcast team, the collective, the just volunteers in the community and supporters of, of the collective. Um, so uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it, I guess. Uh, I have a new book out called Ghost Atlas, and um, I'm going to I'm gonna read some of the poems in it tonight as well. I thought, I know since you're here in my house, um, I would uh, I would maybe do like a little more, um, kind of like show and tell or what have you, you know, like uh, a little behind the scenes. Um, you know, that show on Discovery Channel, how it's made. Boop, 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 that show. So, uh, maybe just like read some poems and tell a little bit about how they, you know, came about or what have you. So Ghost Atlas, um, Ghost Atlas almost didn't get published. Like the bulk of it was written, uh, like sort of in, like I made the manuscript in 2018, thinking that it was a dead, a dead deal. And that the, our company, uh, the company Run Amok Books was gonna close. And I decided, you know, I better go ahead and make this manuscript anyway, because if I don't, it'll never happen. And now, months later, um, that is true. It would not have happened if I hadn't done it when I did. I just had this little window of opportunity. And so kind of like every day for a month, I, uh, I just started to like hammer out the manuscript. And that, um, that was this. It was just this weird, random bunch of paper that I had accumulated over the course of about four years going back 2016 and uh you know what to do with all this you know crap really stuff that uh, had been kicking around and so um you know I, I i made the manuscript and then and then had uh you know made the artwork for it had photography taken and uh starting in july the publisher and myself we started to uh put it together and it went through i don't know about six iterations and um really came out just as I had imagined. So that is such a thrill uh, to have uh, to have your ideas uh, expressed uh, in a publication made manifest, um, you know, so exactly. Uh, so that was just, that's just been really great. Um, it's kind of, I th in my thinking, kind of like part two of my first book. So it is like the same size and everything. And I really, um, you know, I really did all the artwork and everything and, and did it sort of for this publisher, knowing he would be able to do it based on what we did in the first book. Well, anyway, let's see. How about I read some poems? Why not? Let's go. Um, <laughs> thanks. So this first poem, like I'll read some poems and then I'll read a poem and then I'll just yap about it a little bit. This first poem is a very short little poem called War. War, one lead foe, I him now, sky bed bow, red old cry, did few out, two how men, low got bad, knew she her too has fed. All right, so with that poem, War, thanks. With that one, um, I wanted a mathematical constraint. I, I wrote this sitting in the tub thinking about a math poem. And so in this case, it's just three letter words, the whole thing. And each line is composed of three, three letter words. And each stanza is three lines of three letter words. And then there are three stanzas. So I built it this way. And then I, I what I really wanted to emphasize um, was that it was, was to build it in three dimensions. Um, so this is the poem really how it should look. Uh, this is the first line, one lead foe, I him now, sky bed bow. And then this is the second stanza and the third. So that really like, you could read it from any direction, right? Or through the center, uh, back to front and so on. And it would have all those kind of possibilities. So that's that poem, War, and that's the 3D model of it. All right. So this next poem uh, I'll read is a sonnet. It's called Prairie Drama Education Lysistrata. The sky when at is the combine is at. 
Yawns like the forgotten onus and bu, wrote about environments, habitat, compliance there, clients, banking, renew. More motivated, feed me then also. Relationships, the learner's key to ask, this wide talked, engaged lived, elision throw, what faux trial amplified table, toe, task. Costume wood, lighting time, theatrical, book from art in a vast dead custody. Hover just like him banished to old dial in a track violent using one B. Doing the right thing notion sacrosanct, judge play in while I wasted questions thanked. All right, Prairie Drama Education, Liz Estrada. Um, this one, um, this one I wrote uh, sitting in class when I should have been paying attention. And here it is in the original draft. And as you can see, there are no corrections. I just wrote this sonnet from the front to the top to the bottom, sitting in class. And I was just like harvesting bits from conversation. And, and this was a drama class uh, about teaching drama, how to teach drama. And the professor was telling a story about um, you know just this kind of conundrum he was in uh, teaching in a small town in rural Saskatchewan, which was a very you know conservative Christian community. And how was he going to stage the play of Lysistrata? which just to be quick, uh, ancient Greek play Aristophanes in which um, the females of the community deny the men sex because of their reprehensible behavior. Uh, as a consequence, the, the lads are, you know, roaming the streets with these giant erections. And, uh, you know, how to stage this, you know, it's a real prop and costume problem among other things. How, how to stage this with my uh, high school uh, English class in rural Saskatchewan. Well, they did it anyway. And um, so that was kind of the, uh, yeah, like the ambience of the poem. And I think is kind of perhaps like typical of, of, of how I would, how I, how I work, which was is to take this very, very well known and canonical form, the sonnet, uh, a canon that I have, of course, you know, complete and uncomplicated access to, uh, and then, you know, mess with it by you know, using kind of like found object theory to, uh, to supply it with words. Um, you know, hey, it's a favorite thing poets do is mess with sonnets. Sonnets, again, like the math poem, you know, they have so many constraints to them that they are kind of fun to, to, to write. And um, it sure is fun messing with them as well. All right, let's see, I'll read another poem. Um, and this time it goes, I'll do, um, I'll do one of the palimpsest poems or part of one. I'll just do part one, one A. Palimpsest number one, section one A. Everything is here in a way, all artfully placed by no one design. In each word is a song that time forgot. There is a forever kind of talk that sees the codes, fraud, woe, beset with and disinclined. Time is running out, is always, is least understood. Sort of like nothing that didn't happen. All right, so Palimpsest, that idea plays into Ghost Atlas quite a bit. And I'll show you, um, I guess just a little with that, uh, this goes back, that whole sequence goes back to 2016. And, I, you know, again, in terms of like the, the materials that are in the book that accumulated, I had begun writing on this little, um, this little note paper. I don't think we can see any of this, but um, it was just like a note cube. And like some of the first writing I had done in years, you know, literally years, um, was just these little notes like this, little bits and bots. And so this one says, everything is here in a way, all artfully placed by no one design and so on. And, and, and here's the next one and the next. And I just ended up with this whole stack of these. And, and so there's a whole sequence in the book uh, that are just these random little notes. Um, uh, here's another whole pile of them. You know, and as I say, in the month that I built the manuscript, it was just a matter of trying to make some sense of all that stuff. 
All right. Well, maybe I'll read, um, I'll read, I don't know how much, I haven't been keeping track of time. I don't know how, how uh, I'll read another poem or two. Um, you got at least five more minutes, Kurt. Okay, uh, then I'll switch gears. I'm gonna, uh, I've been asked to show some of the maps that are in the Atlas. Like an Atlas, I think this book, guys, you can just like open it to any map as it were, and just uh, kind of bug out on what's on that page. Um, but it can be read cover to cover as you can an Atlas as well. Um, well, let's see. I'll read this section, and this is one of my favorite pages in the book. It's the end of the Praza Metrum, which is like this historical kind of genre, I guess, of, of prose and, and meter verse uh, in the same text. It's usually Praza Metrum or like a, a prose forward text that lapses into verse. And then that whole distinction just gets completely uh, blurred, you know, in the 20th century, for example, in Carlos Williams' uh, book, Spring and All, one of my favorite books. It's much more poetry forward uh, with prose attending. And then, you know, you can tell the difference, but it's, it's not all that easy, but this, it, it's just like a big column down the center of the page. And so then I had also this very long painting and I thought um, that page looked quite nice. As full of suggestion as inconclusive. Oh, how I've missed you. Letter, serious joy. He was talking to his book when forgetting where they went. Remember, remember in the book of, remember the time, Remember what happened? Ephemera, memory in motion. Library is wish list. It's all I'd really like to know honestly, fall. Haven't I said I've done that enough, enough? Unbridled calamity, undone corded bales with no Dover beach to long to mourn, too long remembership cancellation to unsubscribe, this here to hear, to listen, I crispenly sights, sights, sights. It was difficult to live, but to make, during which time mind and body was not kind, would be remiss to let that persist. So that's the end of uh, Prosimetrum, which is just kind of a long sequence in the center uh, occupying the middle of the book. And then maybe I'll read just one more um, last poem. I'll read the demon lap. And that is one that, um, you know, a lot of the stuff in the book comes out of this little notebook. And, uh, you know, here's the demon lap somewhere in here. In any event, oh, there it is. Nope. Well, it's in here somewhere. There it is. The demon lap. And it pretty much is in the book, like because a lot of the stuff was handwritten, a lot of making the book was about transcribing, you know, all this random stuff. And I really tried to, uh, I don't know, try to have like an archivist or curator's uh, sort of approach to it. It was as if, as if I was handed this stack of papers and I had to make some sense of it. Um, so the demon lap Begins with a little quote from John Keats, and be among her cloudy trophies hung. That is from the Ode to Melancholy. Because this is kind of a melancholic poem, I suppose. It deals with the relationship, you know, like that is being, um, I don't know, enduringly painful. <laughs> so, you know, it, th those relationships take a toll on your life, and it's a lot of work to overcome them. And, um, you know, this poem, I guess, is part of that work. I did the demon lap and landed where no me e'er stood, where you were not at the end, dear thine, though I thanked you was fraught. I looped the lap, hooped, lapped it up, flew. You feared and withdrew, knowing where I was going, where failed, failed at feeling, stopped. And then shutting is closing and cutting your book furthest through me. All going all round. Then I counted and saw in the darkness mount the light and green in the light in the dark waves. Over light there our beautiful bright. I find lamentable sad became thy warm sight. 
I spring love to greet you once, Eternam Omnibus, here down Miracle Garden. So, that's some of the poems. I've read a few pieces from this book for IWC, and I don't think I did any duplication tonight. I'm going to just jump into the jukebox here, guys, and share screen. I'm going to do a quick little tour de force of the maps, I guess. Um, if that's okay with everybody, I'll try to be Totally, man. Um, that would be rad. All right, let's see here. Sharing screen, yes. Oakley doakley. And where am I? Here. All right, can people see that okay? Kind of, sort of. Make it full screen if you can, Kurt. Uh, that, that's good. That, that looks better, the zoom in. Sure. All right, so this is the very first map in the book, map number one. They don't have titles. I just, you know, prosaic titles kind of interest me. Uh, so this is the table of contents map, and it's sort of designed on, I, with each map, I wanted to do like a different style of map from history or so in, in a sense. And this is like based on the old Portolano charts from the early uh, days of European exploration. Um, and they were some of the more detailed maps actually that could be had. And uh, it also just lists the table of contents here where normally these would be city names, you know, along the, along the coastline as maritime travel in, in ancient times was primarily just like coast hugging. Um, before the ships, you know, were invented that could go, you know, transatlantic. Uh, the technique for this map was actually to spill a bunch of beans on a piece of paper and trace the outline. It gives you a really, um, like a cool, uh, more authentic kind of coast uh, look than if you just tried to freehand it. And so then when I spread, took the beans away, lo and behold, I had this very kind of like Englishy looking uh, setup here, um, which was appropriate to the text. Uh, so you got Scotland up here, this would be Wales over here, uh, Cornwall down here and so on. Like it was just like a fluke. So there's map one of Portolano. And then this is map number two coming up. So this one is based on a map uh, by a fellow called Walter Miller, a German 1507 with, is this map that is the first known, the first extant uh, positioning of the word America on a landmass on a map. So this is only on the very like western edge of the map what we're seeing here. And um, this is North America up here. And all these islands is like the Caribbean Hispanola. And then this is actually South America. And down here is the word America where it is written on this map in 1507. Uh, well, the United States of America under George W. Bush's presidency bought this map from a German aristocrat who had had it in his castle or whatever for like 200 years. They bought it for $11 million because they wanted the first map that said America on it by gum. And it is now in the Library of Congress. So up here with this arrow points, that's kind of the UR here. This would be the West Coast of British Columbia, basically. Tabula Nova Aid Memoir. And what I focused on in particular here was the wording within the Waldse Miller map that calls South, uh, North America actually Parias, and then it calls America Terra ultra incognita, that is the uh, land of ultra unknowns, <laughs> okay? And that's really how America has started to look to me, all right? An unrecognizable place. Uh, so there's map number two. Map number three, I'll be quick. Maybe I'm taking too long. Map number three. It's all good, man is the start of the Praza Metrum section. And this is an old medieval style map called a TNO map. The Middle Ages abandoned science. Uh, in like the third century BC, it was known that the earth revolves around the sun. And you know that, that just stopped being thought of for like 1500 years. It's kind of crazy. Uh, during the early Middle Ages, they created these TNO maps <laughs> in which the T part going across is the Mediterranean and the north-south part is the Nile. And that's all you need to know. It separates Europe, Asia, and Africa. 
with Jerusalem at the center. That's, you know, that's your world map. We're not interested in geography. Well, anyhow, so those TNO maps are really crazy and lots of fun to look at. In my case, what I did was uh, line all these streets with the names of different prosimetrum through history. Uh, William Carlos Williams is on here, right? Going sideways, spring and all. And all the rest of these are names of different prosimetrum. That is these books that marry prose and poetry. So there's map three, a TNO map from the early middle ages kind of thing. Let's see, map four, I wanted to do like a Tolkien map, a fantasy map, um, so I did. And uh, that's this one here, sort of like a cartoon style fantasy map. And it's just all like chock full of puns. And it's basically this like really dystopian vision of Canada and stuff like that. And I, you know, I think it's lots of fun to look at um, map number four. And then map number five is the weirdest of them all because it's really just like based off of a, a book of maps that I have that shows this little scribbly line, um, which is attributed to being on Columbus's voyage to the new world. It has a little squiggly line in the word Hispanola and that's it, um, which is just like, this would be a piece of paper to discard in any other circumstance, but it isn't of course kept as this valuable document. So um, this map was just a, uh, a piece of vellum that I burned the edges of, and it's a, an acrostic kind of poem using the word appendix because this map starts the appendix and just mirrors the, uh, the kind of text and so on that accompany um, like map type books with, uh, you know, which have like a conservator's efforts uh, to, uh, to display uh, old, uh, old documents. And so this like takes up with that idea of uh, text conservation and archives and things like that. So there's the fifth and final map of the book. So, um, you know, my book is uh, poems and paintings and maps and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully like lots of fun to read when, uh, when it's a rainy day. Why don't, why don't you right. finish with I'm a quick poem, Kurt? I'll, uh, I'll stop sharing here and you, pardon, Cole? Why don't you finish with a quick poem? That's a great idea. Thanks, man. I'll do that. I will finish with a poem. Um, gosh. Well, I said I wouldn't duplicate, but maybe I should read the, t the title poem of the book, although, you know, I think the, t the poem is supposed to like sum up the book and this one doesn't necessarily do that. But this is the, the poem Ghost Atlas. And honestly, like the first three stanzas just poured out like nobody's business. And the last one, I, I just, I couldn't get it right forever and ever. It was annoying. But I finally did finish it. All right, Ghost Atlas. And this too has another epigram by a, a you know, famous romantic poet. They're like um, in the book, all these big you know, giants from literary history, some of them, they're like speed bumps and stuff. You, know, you just run into these guys no matter what, when you look back in time. Who falls from all he knows of bliss, cares little into what abyss. I did feel that way for a time in my life. Uh, and then trapped in a lone cold note boat, born contumely wayfaring the ribald wind. These four trees have seen me scarring myself, grim amalgam of daydreamings, lost handsomely harmfully one fire back at cost, retire to the glazy dim green reach of me. Now to chart the lostness loom, now to brighten the fecund field behold, when great sadness is at work refund the sunny sailorman's summer solstice, High riding wash to wash the gas deck best into garden light gloaming glossed beckons. Playing good children the drum of the draft, mapped as though countries were watching, belonging to that best land, best voiced OTAC, these fevered beings aloft and unfettered arise, hold the place over, cover dawn to bright might, that we go there better in peace and in kindness. Divest unto silence, capricious fair daisy, cavorting the foam of a bright teaspoon sea, where ghosts ask nothing, ludibrium plagius, some unfound forgiveness collated, disappeared. Forever as never is charted, cold eye being deep inland cries, undone freedom ring. Okay, that was Ghost Atlas, a very opaque poem. It goes with this really goes with this uh, painting here. Well, guys, 
Thanks for letting me bend your ear. And um, my book is available on my website, kurtswasson.com. There are links to order it there. Uh, try to avoid the Amazon link and use the other ones instead, like bookshop.org and stuff like that. Also, it's available locally at the Artful Hand Store. If anyone happens through the mall, check them out. Thanks, Cole, and thanks, IWC. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Thanks so much, Kurt. It's so nice to have you. I, I, really, I really admire you as a poet. I think that, that after like 1,500 years of poetry or whatever, 10,000 fucking years of poetry, you still find a way to feel innovative and to, to make poems in this like way that, it, that only you could make poems. Uh, and I think that's, you just, you inspire me. Every time I read a poem, I'm just like, you, I, I just wanna like destroy and play with my, I wanna like be a cat to language and just like play with my food and destroy it. And, and you, just, you just do that in every poem, every line. So thanks, thanks, right. for, thanks for coming on and rocking thanks out at WC that. tonight, man. All right, thanks for Thanks. Everybody. All right. Well, we've come to that time. The, the clapping feels slightly forced. Now the clap, it's a track. I don't, I, I've been making these jokes all season now. I guess they're a bit stale, but I'm going to plug a couple things before we say good night here. Um, we have our IWC public reading series coming up at the end of the month uh, featuring Daniel Scott. Um, he, he's put to, he's edited a collection of poems called Voicing Suicide that collect uh, Canadian authors, I think probably some American authors, but the reading will have uh, four of the authors who are in it, including uh, IWC uh, occasional reader, um, uh, Sally, Sally Kwan is in the book. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, know Sally. And so she'll be reading. Penn Kemp will be reading. Heidi Garnett will be reading. Um, Daniel Scott. We're going to have a three-slot open mic. So if anyone wants to open up for some rad poets, uh, shoot us a message and sign up for that. Uh, as always, I just want to thank all the, the volunteers, all, you know, Erin for all of the work she does behind the scenes. As Kurt said, the board, um, you know, all you guys for all you folks for showing up night in and night out and coming out to support all, all these poets. Um, you know, it, it was so nice to see Travis and, uh, and Nigel, the, between the two of those guys, they've, they've got to have a, quite a few slam titles, uh, IWC slam titles. So it was really nice to see those guys out. Um, let's have, let's have another round of applause for all the poets. The snaps at home, you know. Don't just let the the computer do the work for you. Uh, Aaron Aaron and I are not going to be here the next two events. We have another little human on the way, January 28th, the night of the IWC public reading series. So I won't be there to make sure that you actually showed up when you were nodding when I was saying uh, you should show up. But uh, we'll we'll be back in March. The the wonderful IWC team is gonna is going to make things smooth. You won't even notice that we're gone. Uh, so as always, be gentle with yourself so that you can learn to be gentle with someone else. Have a good night. We'll see you in February. <laughs>